Hi guys, this is Lada from astrolada.com here with another unique astrology update for you. And this information I'm about to tell you today is something you will not find anywhere online, at least I, or on the internet or in books. I have not read it anywhere. I have come uh, up to those conclusions just through observation over the hundreds of years I've been doing astrology. <laughs> I mean, all the personal observations. So it's a technique which uh, I, I, I'm surprised that it's not there because it's just so logical and so obvious. So it's about the sun, moon, and ascend and ascendant because people because people come to me and say, why the three of them? Which one should they listen to? Uh, for example, I just did the yearly 2019 horoscopes, and people would ask me, should I buy the sun, the moon, or the ascendant? Which one is going to happen? But what if they're contradictory? And I I have to explain to each one personally, and I, I'm doing this video so you understand it, or if you're an astrologer, or if you're just uh, passionate about checking your horoscope, you understand why you're checking sun, moon, and ascendant, and what they mean. And by the way, just announcing that, I want to say that I'm making a big sale on the 2019 course um, videos. Each one is an hour and a half, predictions for each sign. I'm sending all 12 for $15.99. Otherwise, they cost $7.99 per one video. But I'm doing a big sale now, so whoever doesn't have their three signs, they can buy auto videos now for just $15.99. Uh, it's like over 13 or over 16 hours of videos, and you can send a present to somewhere. Usually, people at astrologers charge $30 for their yearly videos, but I'm giving them away all in that. So, anyway, um, so what is the ascendant? Let's first see very quickly and then i'll show you how to combine the three to see what will actually happen and it's very simple and i've been seeing it over and over happening manifesting in the life of clients or friends and i'm like why is not everyone doing this so the ascendant is the sign that rises on the eastern horizon the moment you're born and we're using tropical zodiac here which is based on the solstices and equinoxes not on the actual constellations they also have uh, the uh, constellations influence but in a bit different way so when you're born the moment you're born this is the most specific to you the ascendant sign changes every hour to two hours so only your ascendant sign is the most uh, the the sun changes once every month a sign the moon once every two and a half days so the most personal is the ascendant sign and you only can find it if you know your exact time of birth sometimes even five minutes of difference of time can give you the wrong ascendant and the, the ascendant is the point of incarnation of the soul into the physical body it actually symbolizes the physical body and in astrological charts if you're using the western one it's always here on the on this side always here so it might be aries it might be pisces but the signs will shift you know and it means that that sign was rising the sun was shining its rays on on that day the sun not the sun but on that day at that second minute when you were born that constellation or that sorry that sign was rising on the eastern horizon so your soul entered through the rays of that sign uh, into the physical body so the ascendant sign rules the physical body so it will show you the most tangible results that's why I always say check first your ascendant sign, the prediction from the ascendant sign, because this is the one that is usually most set in stone, because this is the material, the body, and the uh, and and that's what is kind of the material has already manifested. It's manifested. It's it's kind of the fated. It's what's written for you. The program that's going to unfold according to. Uh, you know, according to it's kind of already a written book it's when transits are happening in regards to your sentence this is happening around you your environment in your environment you're seeing it say for example if your sentence is Aries and Saturn is currently transiting here your 10th house from the ascendant currently there is a big you know uh, uh, Saturnian influence on your career whether you want to consciously or no this is happening it's part like maybe there is time like you're evaluating your career or you're getting a raise and you have to work three times as hard or maybe some authority figure you're having problems with you know but and or, or if Jupiter if you're Aries ascendant whether you want or no it's meant to be and to happen that you might start studying Jupiter in the 10th house transiting currently you know that you might go and um 
uh, find a teacher or something. But this is the most tangible. The, the predictions, according to the Ascendant, are kind of on the path we're walking physically. They're the ones that are most materially, that happen the most, um, uh, how do I say, just a second. That the most fated, let's say, that the most manifested. Well, the moon sign, and the moon sign can be anywhere in the other 12 signs. The moon changes sign once every two and a half days. So say you have Aries ascendant, but you tend to have, but you have a moon in Scorpio. So you might, it means that the moon is in the eighth house from the ascendant, but you can also look at the whole horoscope as if the moon is your first house, as if the moon becomes the start of the horoscope. Now, it's not the sign that was rising on the eastern horizon. And the ascendant rules the physical body and what's physically happening on you. The moon rules the astral body. So if you put the moon as the first house, we can see how the transits are currently influencing it. And currently, Jupiter is in the second this year, 2019, from the moon. Saturn is in the third. So it's going to influence you as Jupiter in the second, Saturn in the third. So opportunities financially and Saturn in the third, whatever Saturn in the third does, doesn't mean, doesn't matter. But this though is more subjective. The moon is your astral body. It's, it's your emotional body. It's your feelings. Uh, and it's, and you've heard this, whatever you feel, you attract to it, to yourself. You know, if you feel pained and fearful, you're going to manifest it, especially if it's constantly in your vibration. So if, say, Saturn is transiting over the sign of your moon, you have a lot of fears, there'll be a lot of restrictions, and it will first be on the emotional level that you're feeling pain. It might not be even something outside that's happening, and it eventually manifests. But it's also very hard to uh, change the predictions, let's say, the, the free will from the moon sign is a bit, less because if someone tells you uh change your feelings say you're depressed someone tells you feel happy uh, I, i'm happy you know you can say it but you don't you know it's a gradual process with the change of feelings it's um it takes time and uh, um or if someone or, or the ascendant is the physical body and someone and you broke your leg and someone tells you kill the leg well you say okay it's killed but it's not you know it's kind of set in stone the predictions from the ascendant from the moon the moon takes a bit longer uh, a bit uh, shorter than you know but still it's kind of more fated it's based and the moon in astrology rules your all your memories so it's your consciousness what are we we're consciousness that carries the memory of all our previous experiences. But the moon also carries the experiences of the soul from past lifetimes, so the subconscious memories as well. So we carry this big bag of burden of memories and feelings. So we have aggregation of all those feelings. And when someone, and when there is a transit or aspect in regards to the moon sign, all those feelings get activated. All those personalities from past lifetimes all those experiences subconscious or conscious if we remember them from this lifetime get triggered and we often react in regards to transits to the moon or predictions when you're listening oh your moon's your moon sign is in leo so i'm listening to moon, uh, to leo often again we don't have much choice in regards to the events that are happening uh, we feel most often strong as the transits in regards to the moon from the moon sign because we react with feelings. We're feeling, you know, we see from the ascendant, yes, very kind of, uh, this is what's happening, you know. The transit from the ascendant, say Saturn is transiting in your 11th house, you're, uh, uh, you're not emotion. friends are living away from your life. But when it's happening, Saturn transiting the 11th from your moon, you're going to be emotional about it because the moon is what you're emotionally attached to. So Saturn transiting the 11th from your moon, you'd feel it very often much more intensely, especially women, because women are much more in touch with their feelings most of the time nowadays. You know, So women act from their moon a lot more. And a lot of women just write to me and say, I identify so much with my moon. 
Uh, and I see that the predictions that you do about the moon is what really reflects us really in my consciousness because the moon is our individual consciousness. The moon reflects, it's our soul. So we're soul-based beings especially the females or male that are more sensitive that are more in touch with their feelings the moon will be usually the transit from or male born during the night which means the moon rules them they they often will feel and they'll notice psychologically emotionally and as a consequence in an outward manifestation the transit in regards to their moon sign but i always say if you're a woman check your moon sign and i it's incredible, but last year, everything that happened to me was in regards, everything that I considered very, that I was very happy with, because the moon rules emotional happiness. And the moon rules what we consider emotionally important to us, you know. So say, from your ascendant, you're having a great transit, say in the seventh house. Uh, so a relationship appears. Really, one that opens doors for you, fantastic, but... From the moon, Saturn is transiting uh, the sign of the moon, let's say. But you're emotionally not happy. A great partner, which, you know, he offers you everything. The, this is what's actually, from the ascendant, the prediction is the actual developments around you. But from the moon is how you perceive it. Are you happy with it? Or are you not happy? Or say the opposite. From your ascendant, uh, you're having Saturn transiting your... 10th house you're having an um, you get fired for example or you topple down or some some big restructuring is happening uh, at your career with a lot of um, uh, hard work and duties and you're supposed to feel horrible but say jupiter is transiting in the first house from your moon or is transiting in the fifth house from your moon and you feel very joyful you're having a lot of fun so how you interpret what's happening how you feel it's the moon and what actually is much more important to you emotionally is the moon so i can give you an example i'm aquarius rising and jupiter was in my 10th house here's the rising if you take the first house and jupiter was transiting last year in my 10th house so there was an outward material success oh yes i was it was one of my most successful years wherever jupiter goes and when you listen to the prediction for 2018 for Aquarius, you can, Aquarius rising in particular, you can have outwardly success. So it was meant, it was happening. Did I really care much? I'm very grateful, yes. But from my moon, my moon is in Leo, Jupiter was transiting the fourth house. And where my heart was really was all about, I want a property. All I cared about is like, I want a property. That was the most important thing. And family, fourth house is family. So what happened is that I bought my first property ever uh, when Jupiter was transiting because my feelings were infusing. It was also important on me psychologically. My feelings were infusing the desire for this and some kind of the circumstances because of my strong feelings for that aligned to allow for property. To appear but what allowed it is the actual from the ascendant jupiter is in the 10th house what allowed it is that the career was going very well so there was when your reputation career is going well of course it's good time basically to invest in something you know and uh, so that allowed me because the career the new career opportunities that came that increased material success because the 10th house is about that this allowed me to fulfill a heartfelt desire moon uh the transit of the from the moon which was jupiter in the fourth house to buy property and actually all my heart was all the time in motherhood in parenthood all that mattered around me psychologically emotionally was this transit from the fourth house from the moon that i felt rather than from the ascendant my mind was not even on career so much all my feelings was there so i manifested that you know of course saturn will be what blocks you and what gives you problem you know saturn uh over the last uh, uh one year for me from the ascendant has been in the 12th house 12th house is to be when saturn transits there to be restricted and to be cut off and to be uh, isolated in some way so baby jail for me it was baby jail fantastic 
couldn't be better but i wasn't happy about that i'm not it's difficult it's <laughs> and uh, and but that's my reality so i didn't grumble about it saturn in the 12th house when it transits from ascendant gives you the endings of certain things the dissolution the completion of things a lot of project that i completed it was my reality but what i really felt was the saturn transiting the sixth from the moon the sixth house is about duties responsibilities chores and i became obsessed with cleaning with your and that was stressing me in a negative way i'm not used to work so much i'm not used to have to clean all the time i'm not used to so it's been all what my emotional tension and problems have been is that all of the sixth house saturn transit from the moon that feels much more intense to me rather than from the ascendant because it's a feeling all right so enough about me but what about the sun sign because you'll say, what about the sun sign? Like, this is the most popular in Western astrology. Everyone asks you, what sign are you? And they say, cancer. Oh, okay. You're, you know, um, you're very caring and nurturing. Well, the sun sign changes once every 30 days, 29, 30 to 31 days, sometimes actually 29 days, uh, approximately the same time every year, while the ascendant and the moon every year differently and every minute. But the sun is actually your spirit. So the ascendant is your physical body. The moon is your emotional body. And the sun is your mental body. It's the mind. So body, heart, and mind. The sun is the mind. That's the most conscious part of us. The body we can't control. You can't regulate your breathing, your lung activity, you know this ascendant which is the body we don't have control over it so the events from the ascendant are usually set in stone uh, the events from the moon correspond to our astral body to feelings we can have a little bit more control of our feelings or how we react to things but if someone dies you can't make yourself happy if uh, your enemy gets uh, uh, Trumble, trumble, even if you try, you'd be happy for that instead of trying to be, oh, poor him, you know. So feelings you can't control. And also the events from the moon are a bit harder to control because they're accumulation of past experiences and they're your reaction based on your programming from the past, on your emotional programming from past experiences. What can we change? The prediction from the sun, because the sun is our free will, our consciousness our willful actions our mind when someone tells you you're you know you're sick kill yourself your body you can't you know you say okay i'm healed but you're not if someone tells you feel richer okay i feel richer but uh, this mouse is eating my shoes and uh, cockroaches are in my ears and uh, it, it, as much as i want to feel rich i live here in that dump you know it's hard to feel rich when you're not, or, or feel happy, or feel, you know, it's hard to change feelings. But if someone tells you, think like a rich person, or if someone tells you, act like a rich person, the sun is activity of thinking. Or if someone tells you, start thinking about being healthy, well, that you can make. That you can create a conscious change. In. So the predictions from your sun sign are the ones that actually you can do something about. Are the ones where you have the free will, you know? It's known that we have 75% faith at events and 25% free will. This is an esoteric knowledge. You can watch online. There are other teachers and gurus that say that and astrologers from the Vedas, they say that. So those 75% come from the moon and the ascendant, the conditioning. The, you know, the ascendant is the physical body, the moon is the feeling body. Those 25% I give to the sun. That's why in the West we're obsessed with sun signs because we, uh, the Western mentality in the last few hundred years has been, and since enlightenment has been, the age of enlightenment has been that we have free wills, that humans can change their destiny, that humans can improve and get better and become Okay, I might say something that Christians consider blasphemous, but the early Christians believe it. And Jesus Christ said it as well in the uh, Bible of Thomas. He said, you can be like me. The, and I've, even in other Bibles, he said, you can do this and way more than me if you only have faith. 
So yes, we can become like you can progress and change and develop if we just have the moon and the ascendant why it's like everything would be mapped out for us there is no place for change there is no place to maneuver or to use free will in any way the free will comes through the sun sign that's why very often the sun sign would represent or have something to do with your career and your core identity and through that core identity you can change something it's your thinking patterns you know your thinking patterns which we can reprogram we can reprogram them with visualizations with affirmations we can reprogram them with you know with starting to think you know think if you want to be if you want to create the sun is the ability to create the kingdom of your own even if you have the fact up moon so emotionally you mess you abuse that as a child or something in past lifetime you have a fact up ascendant you are uh, ascendant physical body you're sick you cannot walk you cannot you're paralyzed something you know that these are the extremes i'm giving you of a difficult moon difficult difficult moon you're a mess emotionally um paranoia spheres difficult ascendant physically you're totally blocked born in extremely poor circumstances so very you know um you don't even have the physical stamina but you have a strong sun and if you do that with your thinking you've seen so many people that they're on a wheelchair or they've come up from emotionally extremely devastated backgrounds devastating and they raise themselves above with those 25 percent symbolized by the sun of our thinking so we can change only our thinking the thinking will trickle down into the feelings and start changing how we perceive ourselves because the moon is how do you perceive yourself the moon is the mirror so you put a mirror in front of you because it reflects the light of the sun you know so the moon is how do you feel about yourself so a paint moon person looks at the mirror and sees you're ugly you 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 don't deserve love you maybe you are abused in your childhood and you believe that it's your fault and even if you don't believe it consciously now it's kind of you you feel it and you're fat or your um piece of shit or whatever these are all the things that you uh, absorbed emotionally and you carry them you know and, and even if you don't say it in your mind to yourself you look at the mirror and you this is your self-image but you can start changing and that trickles down to your actual reality to the ascendant actual developments in the physical that's happening so it, you get uh you know the transit from the ascendant uh trickling down is that you're so sick that you're unlovable you never you, you attract every time painful relationships or whatever um but once you change the thinking it trickles down to the feeling to the moon and you start looking in the mirror and saying actually i'm better i'm, I'm not a bad person i'm you know i can do this and you start thinking about yourself believe uh, feeling about yourself that you're different feeling a different vibration about your reality that's why all those law of attraction and blah 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 they start with the thinking start visualizing and imagining the sun is the most creative planet with the sun we can create different reality even though it's in our head on and a person with a strong sun sun in a fire sign for example sun conjunct jupiter or sun with um uh, mars or aspects with mars that other fiery planets or good aspects they can visualize and they can create the, the sun is about how we create our kingdom kingdom so they can create even in the middle of a devastation or in the middle of a ghetto they can create first an image in their head of a different future and then they will through their thinking this will shift the emotional response they'll start feeling as if they already have that as if they can achieve it the more vividly they picture it in their mind the sun they can create it with detail the more they start feeling as if they're living that reality people with very strong sun they might be a lot in their head developing those grand visions those big plans for the future you know but anyone can do it even if you have a weak sun doesn't matter you can make baby steps that's why we're here we have we come here because of the role of the sun that we can uplift ourselves from the other with those 25 percent we can turn around our fate and with those 25 percent free will we can change the rest 70 percent the rest 75 percent that are set in stone for for us you know um yes you're born of abusing parents no love so we'll never be loved we'll never 
feel loved and attractive with the sun with your thinking you start and you change that and that's why all those programs that work those coaching problem programs that reprogram your thinking and that that trickles down to reprogramming your emotions and your perception of yourself and then to the reality around you the ascendance so going back to this i go on a tangent i'm a philosopher <laughs> <laughs> I get excited about such topics, guys. If I didn't know astrology, I'd be just talking. I'd be some life coach, probably <laughs> trying to. So I can tell you, I have very weak ascendant with the South Node, which gives a lot of self lack of confidence, insecurities, uh, being very shy. I have a very poor Moon with the North Node that gives you a stable mind. It can give you make you crazy or psychotic. <laughs> I'm a great catch, yes. <laughs> right. With the moon. So my moon and ascendant are quite, you know, and I had my early environment was a mess. I was, it was, you know, I could, and when I put the mirror, I did not like who I saw. Um, a lot of issues, but my son was strong. My son is in Aries. So with that sun, I lifted myself up. So with the sun, I turned everything around. I started dreaming big. I started visualizing. I started creating my kingdom in my own head. And it took, yes, 10 years, but there it is. And now I dream bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> but this is the sun. So the predictions from your sun are the ones where you, you can make something out of it, where you can choose to manifest a higher vibration or choose to make lemon lemonade out of lemons even if you have a difficult as transit from the sun so let's see and th with this whatever the transit from the sun is you can say okay this is my what's happening around me the ascender this is how i feel the moon so what's happening around me is maybe a lot of shit what i feel maybe a lot of shit uh but what i'm gonna make out of it consciously the sun i'm whatever the planet is transiting from there I'm gonna turn it into the best possible. And sometimes it might be that from the sun, there are a lot of negative things. While from the ascendant and the moon, everything is great. So your environment is good, you emotionally, you know, there are not big things disturbing your habits, but mentally you are restless. Mentally you're in a dark place because something from the sun is happening. But of course, if there is something difficult happening from your sun sign as a prediction, you can use free will and change things there so that's why i advise you check the three of them so let's let's give you an example um sorry again i'll, I'll use my chart because i don't know who else is to use <laughs> so my ascendant is here my son is here in aries and uh, my um, moon is here in the seventh house so what's happening now with saturn in the last one year and currently that saturn's been in the 12th house from the ascendant so it puts my actual reality that there is some isolation i actually live on an island that there is some a lot of research or time that can't sleep, definitely certain blocks the sleep, very tired all the time when certain transits at 12, and I can't do anything about it. That's parenthood, that's having tiny babies, you know, and, um, <clears throat> and I'm kind of forced to go within a little bit to be, I can't do anything that I'm more so, you know, out there. But that's my reality, 12 house. There are lots of things ending as well, lots of old habits, lots of bad things i it's kind of happening this is the clock for it from the ascendant this is the fated timing of it uh but at the same time from my moon saturn is in the sixth house so saturn in the sixth house means that emotionally again i'm feeling a bit kind of when saturn is in the sixth house from the moon you can feel emotionally burdened because of duties responsibilities cleaning uh you can feel quite bad about your health and because you feel so emotionally pressured to change something about your health you kind of start you resent yourself for it first then you try and do something about it you know and i'm thinking and i you know and it's basically it's happening again it's kind of fate that i can't control my feelings that i feel so resentful about some bad habits <laughs> uh, and i can't control 
that I feel overwhelmed emotionally with all the duties and responsibilities because that's the sixth house from the moon, you know. Um, and but from the sun, this is the tenth house where Saturn is transiting, and the sun it says, well, on the predictions of 2019 that I've done, it says. Hard work with your career, some big transformations, a lot of responsibilities and duties. You can grow a lot in your career when Saturn transits in the 10th house from something. Or you can uh, downsize, make smaller, more manageable, or you can even be fired if you're not in the right place of career. You have to remove something from your business or career that's not, that's no longer, um, it's like dead wood that Saturn wants to chop off. Well, that's what, and I said, okay, I'm going to use the circumstances that I am in jail, baby jail, for the moment that I can't go anywhere, do anything. And I'm not going to grow the business. Saturn in the tent from the sun wants to downsize. So I'm going to downsize it a little bit. I'm going to streamline it, cut off the unnecessary things, the unnecessary waste of energy and time. And of course, the Saturn in the six from the moon wants efficiency to streamline working processes because there's so many when Saturn is around that you become emotionally super discontent. The only answer to please that moon when Saturn transits the six is to streamline something. And because it's in the 10th from the sun, I'm doing it consciously. So I'm going to make the career smaller. I'm going to make it more focused. And I'm going to focus on working. Even though I'm in isolation, the 12th house from the ascendant, I'm going to get a lot of work done in isolation um, and a lot of technical stuff. So this is how you see. Otherwise, it can, you know, because for, for another person, it might be that Saturn transiting the 11th house, they lose their job. The, sorry, the 12th house. They lose because Saturn rules career. They lose their job. This is their reality. Uh, and but if it comes to being the tent from their son, that can they can take this loss of the job and create lemonade out of lemons. So basically, they can say, okay, I'm gonna, for, uh, I'm gonna. Obviously, this was not for me. So I'm gonna do the best and try to, you know, to sort out my priorities in my in regards to my career. That the ten cows from anything is your reputation. I'm going to create a much more precise uh, resume and target much more specific careers that are up to my priority and streamline it and kind of make my priorities much more organized. So again, you can take it and consciously do something with it. Uh, I can give you other types of examples as well. Let me see. Uh, I don't want to make it too long, but hopefully this is helping you guys. And that's how I want you when I'm listening, when I say, check out your ascendant sun and moon signs. You know, the ascendant will be usually what's happening uh, more tangibly. The moon will be emotionally how you're perceiving it. And it's a bit hard to change the events. And the sun is, we can actually make a change and participate willfully, participate willfully in the prediction of the sun. Um, so uh, let me give you another example. I don't know, let's just take a random, random, let's say um, your ascendant is in Sagittarius. Randomly, your moon is in Cancer. And your son is in Pisces, right? I'm not this close to Millis. <laughs> and your son is here. Or let's say, eh, okay, let's say it in Virgo. So from your ascendant, let's see that Jupiter is transiting your ascendant this year currently. So new beginning, expansion. So something will happen. Even your physical body will start expanding. But new opportunity will come to you. New opportunities that start a new 12-year cycle when Jupiter transits the ascendant. How is that going to manifest? Of course, you can check what Jupiter rules in your horoscope, but some new initiative because Jupiter rules your first house. So self-starting new beginnings. It rules the fourth house in regards to family as well. But... How, is it, how are you going to feel those new opportunities that come? Well, check where Jupiter is 
from the moon. If your moon is in Cancer, Jupiter will be one, two, three, four, five, six in the sixth house from Cancer. So all of a sudden, those new opportunities can really improve the work environment, sixth house. And you can start feeling you can, you know, there can be some new ideas for education or whatever that Jupiter brings, which is Jupiter is connected to education, to the first house, you, and which will allow you to grow your career, to grow in some way, because Jupiter is about growth from the sixth house of the moon, to start feeling optimistic that you can expand your career, you can expand your experiences, whatever new opportunities come can directly influence your career in some way as well. Uh, and um, also the first house is the physical body, so you can get more energy and enthusiasm now, and the sixth house from the moon, it can make you enthusiastic because if you have more energy to uh, improve your health, because the sixth house from anything is how to fix something, how to improve something. Uh, so that can definitely all of a sudden start improving your, uh, emotionally you feel ready to improve your health, you're ready to easily let go of old habits, and this Jupiter transit in the first house is helping as well. But Jupiter transit in the sixth from the moon is as well helping. So you can start feeling better about certain, feeling better about certain health issues you have because of this new beginning that's having those new opportunities and those new insight that Jupiter is bringing overall in your life. And then from your sun, Jupiter falls in the fourth house. If your sun is in Virgo, one, two, three, four. So then you can something good can happen in your life in regards to your family because of these new opportunities that came because you change your health in some way so maybe now a new family member can be added or maybe because your new opportunities came you expanded somehow your career opportunities there or your work employment possibility you employed better people for example jupiter from the sixth house and because of that you can buy property now or you can expand your property, you know, or you can, uh, because you, your health improves, because your overall, your body improves, Jupiter over the ascendant, your opportunities improve, that makes you improve your health, Jupiter from the sixth house, and that leads to you enjoying family and bonding with family better, you know, so you see how you can, uh, use those energies that, that you can combine the three energies. They're connected somehow. What if it's a hard planet? Let's see another example. Let's quickly look at Saturn again. So you have ascendant in. Uh, let's start with Gemini. Let's say you have a uh, moon in Aquarius. Let's say you have sun in Sagittarius all right so from your ascendant Saturn is currently whatever transits they are you know I'm just using the current ones as an example so Saturn says currently transiting your eighth house so it's creating some restrictions in regards to the resources of your partner it's happening or some intimacy restrictions when Saturn transits the eighth house the ability to be intimate you know or you know something like that or sometimes it can bring experiences of death divorce that prolong over two years two years mm -hmm. and a half the grieving period of big transformation but this is the reality something like that is happening for example but from your moon Saturn is in the 12th house you can feel emotionally like a big loss when Saturn transits the 12th from the moon you feel like a big loss something is ending you know you kind of emotionally also feel it there and there might be certain and uh, 12th house rules expenses so you might be worried a lot about expenses because the moon worries a lot uh, and of course, if, if there is the influence, if the financial resources are blocked from the eighth house, from uh, from the ascendant, if, if partners' resources are blocked, you might worry a lot when Saturn is in the 12th from the moon emotionally about expenses, about the unclear future. It can even bring some kind of emotional pull, you know. Um, or Saturn can also uh, block your ability to travel because of what happened for example what happened that your partner's resources have been or resources that you receive from some other source have been made smaller and because of that saturn from the 12 from the moon might make it harder for you to travel internationally that's another thing you know or 
the 12th house rules bad pleasure. So the intimacy has decreased, Saturn has dried it up and it affects you that there is less sex or ability to have bad pleasures and enjoy, you know, in the privacy of each other. So that becomes emotionally your biggest issue. You focus on that 12th house from the moon that Saturn is in you like, uh, we don't have enough sanctuary and privacy and, you know, but it's first stems from the ascendant. And then from your son, Saturn goes into the second house. So that directly can impact as well your finances. Because the second is your own money. So you see how they, they can be connected. But the sun can do something about it. The sun can say, all right, all this shit around me is happening. I worry about that. This is the circumstances. I worry about that. Uh, whatever, but let me fix something and let me make some changes consciously. Let me shift my thinking and start thinking of a different way how to do about my resources. Yes, financial situation due to a partner uh, or stopping of some support from another is less or there is less intimacy in my relationship or I'm going through a big life transformation starting in the eight from the ascendant uh, some big transformation and the moon feels like there is a big loss but the sun says i'm going to take advantage of that and try to become financially sufficient self-sufficient the second house saturn wants to put can you can consciously put your resources into order and you can consciously develop a different mentality about your resources and about your self-worth the second house rules self-worth so these are things you can consciously work on self-work your bank account your money so you can start, for example, studying hard and doing some hard work consciously on rewiring your brain um, and overcoming some ignorance and false old beliefs uh, and old blockages in regards to what yourself is worth, in regards to how much money you can have, in regards to uh, what is possible financially for you. And it might be a two and a half year work while well, Saturn trans the second house, but it can turn out that actually really stabilized your resources and made you have way more uh, at the end of this period you can feel like you become financially independent have more control conscious over your resources manage them better and build more lasting self-worth built on something more uh, uh, lasting values of some sort so you see how this can be used always to turn something into something especially through the prediction of the sun. That's why so many people recognize themselves. They say like, my sun uh, prediction is so correct always. Because that's the only place where we can use some free will and when we can consciously turn something for the better. And we love that in the West and we should love it. Everyone should love it because we do have those 25%. So that's my look on it. That's your philosophical astrological lesson on it. So if you want to check your 2019 horoscopes there basically one is 7.99 but i'm give, selling you the whole package i'm only selling the whole package of 12 for 15.99 over 16 17 hours of 2019 predictions month by month sign by sign so oh, also we have written ones from uh, my teacher and i'm preparing for you written ones for each month starting from march guys from March 2019, there will be about 70 pages for each sign for the overall month and specifically for your sign. So there will be 12 for each sign. So yeah, you have me not only on screen doing your 15 minutes monthly predictions, but something you can read the whole month. And if you still haven't tried the free transit calendar, guys, it's free for a week always, a week ahead, two days, behind and seven days about before always if you, if you log in tomorrow again you know seven days so and those of you who are a bit impatient and want to see the whole year transits and plan ahead you can unlock transits either for a month or three months or six or a year and that's i don't know anything like that on the internet um and um it's very affordable so we already have fifteen thousand people using it daily which is fantastic, over three weeks since I launched it. I can't believe that. I'm hoping for 100,000. I'm hoping this tool to reach everyone because by watching your transits and they are your own specific, no one else in the world has those transits. 
you become so attuned to the universe, you are prepared for everything, you see that there is meaning and purpose in life, that nothing is by chance, you see that we are go go governed by some outer, not, it's not everything in our hands, so you don't blame yourself for everything, but at the same time, you see that there is different options, and with your free will, with the use of sun, which is your intelligence, by using your intelligence, listen, you can manifest the higher manifestations rather than the low ones when you're prepared mentally, intelligently. I love you all, and I have amazing surprises for you for 220. I just have to work very hard behind the scenes, Saturn Trust in my 12th house. I'm gonna give you access to the most amazing free tools, guys, astrologically, even though you, you might not need to know any astrology, but I'm, I just, I had today this inspiration, I'm gonna work to make it happen for you for a year. So, or maybe, couple of years <laughs> we'll see but stay tuned this will be the probably the one of the biggest free tools for astrology with the most free information ever so you'll see <laughs> excited about it bye bye